Hello, here's your 3.4 to 3.6 screencast. Three point four is on the ideal gas law, and the learning objective is explain the relationship between the macroscopic properties of a sample of gas or mixture of gases using the ideal gas law. So the essential knowledge, um, first you have the ideal gas law itself, PV equals NRT. And you just want to know what all the variables mean. Um, so starting on the right, we have uh, T is temperature. Uh, temperature has to be in the Kelvin scale. And if you're given temperature in Celsius, uh, you add 273 to that to get to the Kelvin scale. Um, R is the ideal gas constant. And there's two R values listed on your equation sheet. You have 0 0.02, 0 0.08. 206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin and you have 62.36 liters per mole Kelvin so and then the next one is n n is the number of moles of gas v is the volume and that has to be in liters and p is a pressure and pressure can either be in it depends on the value of r it, generally for the problems that we do it'll be in atmospheres or tor. So if you use atmospheres, you want to use a 0.08206, and if you use tor, then for the R value, you want to use 62.36. So know what all those variables mean, and uh, be able to solve for any one of those variables by rearranging this equation as needed. The next two equations um, deal with Dalton's law, which is uh, the concept that when you have a mixture of gases, those gases don't interact. So this first equation, PA equals P total times XA. Now XA is called the, the mole fraction, and <clears throat> you find XA, it's equal to moles of gas A divided by your total number of moles. to get the mole fraction. And then you just multiply the total pressure times that mole fraction to get the pressure of just that individual gas. And the last one, P total equals PA plus B, PB plus PC, and however many the other mini gases that you might have in this mixture. But you can just add together these partial pressures to get the total pressure of the mixture. All of these equations, including this equation for mole fraction, are on your equation sheet. Uh, next, you have 3.5 on kinetic molecular theory, which is, that's just talking about how the particles in the gas behave. The learning objective is explain the relationship between the motion of particles and the macroscopic properties of gases with A, the kinetic molecular theory, and B, a particular model, and C, graphical representation. So the essential knowledge for, for this section First of all, you want to be able to relate properties of gases to the motion of particles. And generally what, what you have to do with this is uh, relate pressure to what's happening at the particle level. Uh, pressure happens when you have the, the particles of the gas collide with the wall of the container. So the more collisions that, that occur, the greater the pressure. So if you're talking about um, how we can affect these different properties and what they do to pressure. If you increase the moles of the gas, you're going to have more collisions uh, and then a, a greater pressure. Or if you increase the temperature of the gas, then the particles move around faster. They collide more often with the container. That increases the pressure. If you decrease the volume, that's also going to increase the pressure. So you want to generally talk about uh, pressure in terms of what's happening at the particle level to, to change the pressure. The next thing you have, kinetic energy is related to average velocity. Um, the, the equation for kinetic energy, and this is also on your equation sheet, is uh, it's equal to 1 half mv squared. So 1 half times mass times the velocity squared. So there's also a mass component. And then you have the Kelvin temperature is proportional to average kinetic energy. So that means that the, the Kelvin temperature 
is proportional to the velocity of the particles. And now one thing you want to understand is that this is average velocity. So that even when you have higher temperature gases, you're still going to have some particles that are moving slow. On average, you're going to have particles that are moving faster. But uh, understand there's a distribution there. But if you have higher temperatures, that generally leads to faster moving particles on average. And then that also leads to Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, where this is a, a picture of what's happening there. With Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, at higher temperatures, you have a wider distribution. So this is the graph for 100 Kelvin. This is the graph for 1000 Kelvin. And you can see at the higher temperatures, you have a wider distribution. So you're going to have a greater average kinetic energy of those particles. But again, kind of the key understanding is you're still going to have some particles down here that are moving slow. So even at higher temperatures, you have slow moving particles. And then 3.6 is on deviations from ideal gas law. The learning objective is explain the relationship among non-ideal behaviors of gases, interparticle forces, and or volumes. So some, some stuff that you need to understand with this, um, first of all, that there is no such thing as an ideal gas. There's only real gases that approach ideal behavior under certain circumstances. Um, ideal gases have two big assumptions that are never really true. Uh, the first one is that there's no attraction between the particles in ideal gases, but in reality there are some attractive forces between the particles. And the second assumption uh, that the particles have no volume. Um, even though in gases the, the, the gas particles are spread out, um, and the, the assumption is that the, the volume of the particles is so small compared to the overall volume of the gas that it, it's negligible. So neither of those things are true, though. Um, and then you want to be able to compare like under what circumstances or which types of gases will be more or less ideal in certain certain situations. So let's compare a couple different gases. Let's say we have H2 and you have uh, chlorine gas, Cl2. And the question is which one would be more ideal? So Sorry, that's not very clear writing, but it says more ideal. So you want to say, which one's more ideal? So you have H2 and Cl2, and let's say you have the same pressure. These two gases are under the same pressure, and you have the same Kelvin temperature. So you want to look at these two factors right here. Um, attraction between particles. So in hydrogen gas and chlorine gas, um, you want to say, which one has a greater intermolecular force? Well, they're both diatomics, so they're both going to have London dispersion forces. But Cl2 is a larger particle, so it's more polarizable. That leads to a stronger London dispersion force. So Cl2 has a greater attraction between the particles. And for particle volumes, chlorine is just it's bigger than hydrogen, so it's going to have a greater volume. So the volume of this particle becomes less negligible. That means that at that same pressure and temperature, hydrogen would be the more ideal gas. You would expect it to be the more ideal gas because it has weaker intermolecular forces and it has a smaller particle volume. All right, and the last uh, thing here, um, you want to know this too. The, in general, for least ideal, you have high pressures and low temperatures. High pressure means that the particles tend to get closer together. And that leads to uh, more attractive forces between the particles and the volume of the particles becoming uh, more important. And low temperature means that the particles are moving slower and then have a greater chance to attract one another. So in general, high pressures and low temperatures lead to uh, less ideal gases. And that's all for today. Have a great day.